So, we will try to finish today about our nickel story. So, today we will talk about some other enzymes, rather other two enzymes. which will deal with the transfer of methyl group in another case the condition where you can tackle the superoxide. So, which is talking about the transfer of methyl group. What we find in vitamin B12 or several other places where we can have the metal center which is attached to the methyl group. And we all know that this particular part of reactions which are very important and nature is also doing that kind of reaction we call it as sometime as biomethylation. So, how the metal ion nickel now in its most preferred oxidation states, how it can handle the transfer of methyl function from one particular unit to the other that we will see. And in this particular case the biomethylation reactions that means the biological part is there and one more important part for this is that we all know that any simple substrate like this that means is a very simple substrate and if we want to make it as a S methyl 1 hmm, so 2 amino thiophenol. Hmm, this is 2 amino thiophenol if we want to get this S methylation. So, something we have to put there that means similar to that of biomethylation reaction or that. So, some group like that sometime how we can go for the methylation reaction in presence of methyl iodide. So, if certain mechanism is there because this particular thing basically is a carbon single carbon reagent C 1 reagent. Hmm. So, this can be produced from anything like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide or anything. So, if this particular type of conversion can give you the formation of methyl function and that methyl group can be transformed nicely to form one substrate to other and if you just find that the involvement of one such nickel center is present we get something which we call it as a methyl coenzyme M reductase. Hmm. So, this is a big name though, but still you find that the, the coenzyme is there which is giving some reaction which is a reductase function and the methyl transfer will be taking place. So, what is there at the backbone of that particular reaction is a low valent nickel tetrapyrrole. So, very basic identification or the very basic definition for the enzyme system tells us that you have a nickel center plus the ligand attached to is, is a tetrapyrrole type of environment that means the one particular square plane is occupied by four nitrogen atoms like any other pyrrole containing group and that nickel is there and that nickel we can stabilize in that particular environment because you cannot have tyrosine type of residue or any other type of residue which can stabilize nickel in the normal oxidation state that means plus 2 or in some higher oxidation state, but it can stabilize nickel in low oxidation state. So, which is also very much important to know that if when we talk about the methyl cobalamine the, the vitamin B 12 system where the C H 3 group is attached to the cobalt center we always try to have that particular metal center in low oxidation state that means the cobalt 1. So, that particular center when it is nickel, so it is re responsible for methane synthesis as well as sometimes the anaerobic methane oxidation. So, basically this particular center can handle the methane synthesis and that particular thing what we find afterward that 
that definitely some methyl group is attached to there and this methyl function if we can supply some hydrogen atom to it, it can produce nicely the CH4. So, it is biologically how we produce this methane which is definitely a very important reaction because all sorts of methanogenic bacteria they produce methane and in this particular reaction the terminal enzyme for that reaction is the methyl coenzyme M reductase which is MCR and that MCR is catalyzing the conversion of methyl coenzyme M this is your methyl coenzyme M. So, name tells you that you is a very good reagent for supplying your methyl like your methyl iodide. If you go for providing some methyl group uh, the methyl group from the methyl iodide. So, you have to you have used the some reducing agent and then supply the methyl iodide like that of your S methylation reaction the thiol methylation reaction. So, in this particular case the methyl S coenzyme M which is reacting with is a big name though this N7 mercaptoheptanoyl threonine phosphate. So, we will come to what is the structure because at least from the name you should able to write down the structure of that particular species. So, this has also SH function. So, essentially what we are getting that this is basically S methyl compound like 2 amino thiophenol which is methylated by methyl iodide. So, which is a S methyl containing group and that S methyl containing group instead of supplying this methyl group to this SH because all we have seen that this can also be SH, hmm, SH on COM. So, S methyl on COM this can supply to its methyl group to this one that means this threonine phosphate function to make it COBSME and in other route what is happening there that instead it can go because both of them the one is providing the methyl function and another is providing the hydrogen atom giving rise to your methyl function and you have the oxidized form of these two coenzymes. So, one is there. So, if both of them are remaining in S minus and S minus and if we go for oxidation we know that cysteine cysteine conversion or any other type of conversion where you can have in the protein chain we find large number of this type of reaction where you can have the disulfide linkage formation. So, during that disulfide linkage formation between these two parts of these coenzymes we are able to produce the methane from the system. So, you have the nickel tetrapyrrole system now how we can provide that particular methyl group. So, it should be so this reaction should be nickel center catalyzed it is not a direct reaction between these two, but it is a nickel catalyzed reaction. So, methyl coenzyme <coughs> that reductase methyl coenzyme and reductase a nickel hydrocorphin we call it now as a porphyrin related species which is a tetrapyrrole system and we call it is a coenzyme A430 which is well known like our cytochrome P450. Huh? So, you should be able to identify this number. So, cytochrome P450 was there in one form it can show the corresponding lambda max value at 450. So, similarly this particular species and can also show its corresponding maximum absorption at 430 nanometer that is why it is called is a coenzyme F is a coenzyme factor which is responsible for absorption at 430 nanometer due to the presence of the conjugation in the hydrocorphin backbone. So, this is located base of a narrow hydrophobic well. So, this is the protein part how where it is located and sometime it accommodates two substrates and seals the reaction from solvent that means it is not directly reacting with the solvent that means the water molecule. Since it is a porphyrin type of ligand, so we can identify the ligand first then the metal center and then its reactivity. So, unlike him, so the in hemoglobin or in him what we have the porphyrin which is really conjugated, but in this particular case a 430 only contains 5 double bonds. So, altogether if you know that how many double bonds are there in the porphyrin ring instead of that that means there are altogether 10 double bonds, but instead of that 10 double bonds in this A430 you have 5 double bonds and this is the 
naturally available or naturally obtained species where you can consider or you can tell this as the most reduced tetrapyrrole system. Hmm. So, in case of vitamin B12 in several other cases we have several other tetrapyrrole system including the photosystem, but this is the most reduced form. So, you do not have extended conjugation for that, but this particular nature has devised certain mechanism for that that this tetrapyrrole is well suited to bind your nickel center and since it is a little bit reduced one and most reduced one. So, it will definitely a had a Packard structure that Packard structure or non planar structure what I have discussed while talking to the porphyrin you can recall back that also that how that bind is there. So, if when metal is not there, so in the metal free form you have two nitrogen pointing towards downwards and two nitrogen upwards we have a bowl shaped structure earlier we have seen in case of porphyrin. So, this also has a different structure when in the free state and also in the nickel bound state and that is definitely responsible for stabilizing the nickel preferably in nickel plus 1, nickel in plus 2 or in nickel plus 3 state. But what is the corresponding active state? The active state of MCR is called MCR reduced 1 which contains basically low valent nickel 1 that means this particular one. So, the reduced this reduced tetrapyrrole system is useful to stabilize your nickel in plus 1 oxidation states. So, whenever the active site can is identified in nature, it is a very difficult task to identify the corresponding oxidation state every time we are saying that you never know whether the your ligand system is oxidized or your metal system is reduced. So, people go for identifying these two things first that means, what is the color that is it should be definitely a colored species and in is the paramagnetic one also. And when we go for this particular EPRS measurement, we will find that this low valent nickel 1, it has a characteristic axial spectrum, you have G parallel and G perpendicular part for that particular spectrum and which is higher than the free electron G value. Hmm. So, uh, free electron G value which is very much close to 2.0 which we can find sometime that there is a uh, standard reference material which is your DPPH. So, with respect to DPPH uh, diphenyl picryl hydrazyl, you find that you have some values which are higher than that and you have a axial spectrum and which is characteristic for that of your nickel 1 center. And sometime by looking at the EPR spectrum, people can also find out whether this can have the another alternative for its paramagnetic state for this nickel that means, it can also be the trivalent nickel. So, but it is not a trivalent nickel, it is the monovalent nickel and these EPR signals are very much characteristic for that. So, this is our structure. So, you have a reduced tetrahydrocorphenoid coenzyme form. So, this is the whole structure of the nickel tetrahydrocorphenoid coenzyme and F430. So, you have this A, B, C, D, these are the four five member tetrapyrrole rings. And compare if you just whenever you see this thing, is always you should compare the corresponding conjugation or the unsaturation for the thing. So, is the most reduced one because you are not having one double bond here, another double bond and two from here. So, one is missing, one double bond is missing here, two is missing from here and another is missing from this D group, D ring. So, altogether all four A, B, C, D they are losing one, one, two, one. That means, altogether five double bonds we are reducing to get this tetrahydrocorphenoid ring and you have the similar type of amide and that corresponding carboxy and substitutions for that. And also one more thing is interesting very much interesting compared to your tetrapyrrole which is present in the hem molecule is that you have all these three nitrogens which has been shown as the arrow attached to the nickel center that means, they are all tertiary nitrogen. Only this nitrogen is NH nitrogen. But in case of porphyrin attached to the hem function, we have 
two NH groups are there. So, when the ligand we call is the ligand basically in terms of the corresponding protonation level that in that case that means in case of him we can consider it as H 2 L it has two hydrogens attached to L, but this is basically H L. So, one of this proton is available on this nitrogen. So, when you go for this basically the corresponding charge or in the deprotonated form this in the deprotonated form give a corresponding ligand for this tetrahydrocorphenoid which we can label as L minus. So, the deprotonated form is L minus not L 2 minus like that of your porphyrin. So, it is very easy to say from there that if since it is L minus you do not have excess charge on the ligand system after deprotonation it is very much suited for stabilizing nickel in a monovalent state. That means, nickel in the monovalent state if you attach it with this if the entire system will be electro neutral. So, the electro neutrality can also be a little bit driving force to stabilize the nickel in the low oxidation state. But if your ligand which is available on the porphyrin which is already L 2 minus have already in the deprotonated form depending upon the pH of that particular part immediately you get L 2 minus and that L 2 minus species can have some tendency to stabilize this nickel or the iron center what we find in case of porphyrin to stabilize the metal center in plus 2 oxidation state. But in this particular case you can stabilize nickel in plus 1 oxidation state. So, you see that is very important that means like that of your pyridine donor atoms whenever you have a ligand system or anything natural or unnatural species which is going to bind your metal center if you have the pyridine donor all four pyridine donor groups you can expect that you can get the corresponding metal center in low oxidation state. That means, you can compare the corresponding binding behavior of pyridine with respect to that of your phenol. If it is phenol that means, if you have a tyrosine end. So, tyrosine end is when it available from the protein chain it will always try to stabilize the corresponding metal center in the normal oxidation state or the high oxidation state. But when it is histidine type of nitrogen like that of your pyridine like in your hemocyanin and all these cases you are able to stabilize that particular center in low oxidation state like that of your copper in plus 1 oxidation state what we gain in case of hemocyanin. So, why it is uh, the corphenoid so tetrahydrocorphenoid type that means corphene type corphenoid means is a corphene type. So, porphenoid related to corine ring that means it has neither it has some similarity with porphyrin and other part is similar to that of your codin ring. So, very simple thing is that you should be able to answer you always practice for that you know now the macrocyclic green porphyrin you know the corresponding macrocyclic green corin which is attached to the vitamin B 12. Now, you get something which is in between porphyrin and corin that is why it is labeled as corphene. So, if you draw the three structures that means, the structure of porphyrin, the structure of corin and the structure of corphene then you should be able to correlate that that how much similarity you have with that of your corphene to that of your porphyrin and with that of your corin. Because if you just look at this particular ring, this particular ring was also present not present in the porphyrin, but it was present in corin ring. Huh? So, you should be able to correlate in that fashion because all the things groups because the nature is giving you this particular thing, but always you can have that thing information that in the catalytic activity you are stabilizing the nickel in plus 1 oxidation state, but it is very difficult to make any unnatural tetrapyrrole which you can prepare in the laboratory to stabilize this particular compound so easily that means, the nickel compound in plus 1 oxidation state. So, the mechanism is always you can have the mechanism because you can have the different pathways and those mechanisms what tells us that you have to support one particular mechanism or a second alternative, but there are clues and there are some uh, evidences which can support mechanism 1 and mechanism 2, but when we say that is going through some reactions because there are a large number of reactions not only for methane 
but involving all these coenzyme reduction that one particular pathway is this and another particular pathway is this. So, distinctly you can have two different mechanisms and basically is sometimes is very difficult to identify whether this particular mechanism is going through a organometallic pathway that means like that of your vitamin B12 like that of your vitamin B12 you have a distinct species where you can have a metal carbon bond that means the nickel methyl group is present. So, whether it is going through a organometallic methyl nickel intermediate or another pathway where you can stabilize this particular pathway through the formation of methyl radical. So, in the first case is very simple for any organometallic catalytic path that means you have this that means the nickel 1 and this nickel 1 you just providing a reagent which can supply your methyl group like that of your methyl iodide is basically the same reaction what you can have if you are able to stabilize nickel in solution by using some reagent that means nickel what you can prepare with that of your macrocyclic ligand that nickel is prepared initially in the bivalent nickel. So, nickel is in plus 2 oxidation state. So, what you will do in the second step you reduce it by say borohydride. So, when you reduce it by borohydride, so that borohydride species or any other reducing agent can reduce the nickel center to nickel in plus 1. And in that particular state, if you use some methylating agent like the coenzyme, so that particular reagent if can be methyl iodide. So, if it is methyl iodide is given immediately it can give you the corresponding methylated form of your nickel and nickel is oxidizing to plus 1 to plus 3. So, this particular one that means this change is also taking outside your metal ion environment that methyl group is transferred to nickel center and this SH group that coenzyme B is providing this proton to this function and then this particular case that means this trivalent nickel which is not so stable that means we are taking the advantage of that the nickel can also form nickel in the plus 3 oxidation state. So, but this is a transient existence. So, that is why we can have these two alternatives that the transient existence for nickel in high oxidation state and the existence of methyl function as the radical this always happens hmm, in the biological system if they are very much delocalized any system and electrochemistry or any other thing measuring it in in sub cyclic voltammeter it is very difficult to identify the site of oxidation whether the corresponding oxidation that means the one electron transfer for the species from 2 to 3 whether it is taking for a center where it is metal centered oxidation or it is a ligand centered oxidation. So, nickel 3 is forming it is going then in the next step the nickel center will be immediately reduced back if the nickel center is reduced back what will happen you can oxidize the surrounding. Hmm. So, surrounding so it is going through a process where it can go for some interaction that means the thyl radical. So, it will try to form a corresponding thyl radical, but it is not in the deprotonated form. If it is in the deprotonated form you do not have to consider about the corresponding H plus, but it is still protonated and in the protonated form you have this corresponding interaction. So, it is not deprotonated in that form and if these two groups that means surrounding nickel your methyl group is supplied to nickel center and these two groups now in close proximity that means you have available sulfur sulfur ends from these two groups and you have the available sulfur sulfur ends and you are trying to oxidize it. That means how we make this particular one we all know that synthetically in the laboratory how we get this corresponding disulfide. it is very easy to make. Hmm. Sometime if you can give the suitable condition one important example is reagent is air from giving you oxygen or simply hydrogen peroxide. So, you get that that means hydrogen peroxide that means you have to have some oxidizing agent. So, this oxidizing agent 
which is responsible for its corresponding oxidation and this end one end of this that means this particular S end. So, one end of this and another end of this if they are close enough to each other you get the corresponding disulfide linkage. So, you have to have some oxidizing agent as well as you put one particular group close to the other function. So, this particular so it is not deprotonated, but in the protonated form it will start interacting with another sulfur. So, this electron density is pushed to the other sulfur. So, you get some sulfur sulfur linkage over there and this particular one when you go for this. So, this particular one is already removed and you get the methyl function. But the thing is that for the second mechanism that the step wise we should be able to tell in that way that here if you have this uh, instead of this methyl coordination you see if you have a substrate and which is not so easy to consider that if you have a nickel center that means nickel 1 and you are using something that means you have some group that means you have when we talk about that for unnatural system the laboratory system that means you are providing methyl iodide and that methyl iodide is giving you the methyl group to the nickel center. But in this particular case you see in one case you have a change for that you have a suitable condition where you get a organometallic intermediate that means your methyl group from this particular end the methyl group is your ligand you are providing the methyl function to ligand for the nickel center. But at the same time when you go for this SH because that is why it is protonated from here if it is protonated its binding property or binding potential to nickel is less. But if it is not protonated if it is going for that some cleavage only that means the carbon sulfur bond cleavage is taking place and sulfur is coming from there and this sulfur is definitely the your new ligand. So, this sulfur group can bind to your nickel center. So, interestingly is not so difficult for establishing which particular mechanism is operating for one system and which is not operating because here you can have the metal carbon bond and here you have the metal sulfur bond. And once you make this methyl radical, so it is a radical pathway and this will abstract this hydrogen atom forming that corresponding CH4 that means here it was producing methane in the third step, it is producing methane in the second step and your this end, this end is nothing but your coenzyme M, hmm, the entire molecule we can have because you have the corresponding charge on that uh, sulphide function on the other end. So, this sulphur group is attaching over there. Now, is that you have S dot over here. So, already you made this S dot and one sulphur is already bound to the nickel, but this is a very difficult proposition that your one sulfur end is bound to the metal center and this sulfur is in the radical form. So, now these two sulfur will start interacting to each other. So, now the new disulfide bond will start forming between these two and it will be removed from the metal center. So, that removal from the metal center will lead to this particular situation again and you go for this particular thing and here if you just provide this particular that means is the cycle continues again with methyl coenzyme N and COBSH. So, the COBSH what we will see uh, that particular species that this is the whole form. I told you a big name for that, but that big name is nothing but is a not a very complex molecule, but you can have is a long chain because this the alkyl chain is little bit bigger compared to your coenzyme M and this bigger alkyl chain. So, forming your corresponding SS species and your methyl group. So, definitely your methyl coenzyme ring reductase what people have identified from uh, this methanobacterium thermoautotropicum. So, this is the source basically the methyl methanobacterium thermoautotropicum is a very complex molecule and people could identify this particular metal center because the metal is present. So, this particular center because you have so many channels, so many things and where the actual reaction is taking place is very difficult to identify sometime, but <coughs> people could identify that you have the tetrapyrrole. So, this is your tetrapyrrole unit and that tetrapyrrole unit uh, is responsible for this conversion 
and this particular part because once you find out this particular part also. So, is one part of that. So, is a PDB is the protein data bank. So, you have is a everything is available nowadays this is a from the protein data bank you can find out that thing. But this particular part is interesting to us that means the corresponding tetrapyrrole cofactor and when you have the nickel 1 it is basically that is why we all the time we are talking about a tetrapyrrole because the in plane stabilization of the metal center is important. And when you go for the other oxidation state that means the nickel 1 or the nickel 3 you can have some interactions from the coordination number which is above the plane and other is below the plane. So, what we see that the steps basically what we I told you that is the simple thing that the mechanism 1 and mechanism 2 already I, we have shown pictorially that nickel 1 is basically performing the nucleophilic attack on the methyl coenzyme M and releases coenzyme M. In the second step all the steps are now I have written over here actually the electron transfer from the alkyl nickel 3 which we have generated like that of your methyl cobalamine. So, alkyl nickel 3 portion is nothing but your methyl cobalamine type of thing and then we produce the nickel 2 plus 2 oxidation state attached to the alkyl and the COM as the radical and in the third step your COBSH is taking up and your disulfide radical anion is forming there is a not pure disulfide radical is formed. So, disulfide radical is formed as proton transfer is taking place. So, sometime the without proton the disulfide uh, disulfide uh, attachment formation is important and sometime this particular part which is attached to the proton is important also to proton transfer because all the cases you will find that thiol function is there and th that thiol function can have the different protonation level either it is protonated or it is not in the protonated form that is in the deprotonated form. So, the radical anion what is there that reduces the nickel 2 yielding the corresponding uh, this hetero disulfide and nickel 2 is then reduced back to your nickel 1. So, when you start from here that means the step 1 to step 4 you are starting with the nickel 1 and you should able to complete the cycle and you will end up with nickel 1 again back to uh, go back to your cycle again. So, this is for your mechanism 1 and similarly for the mechanism 2 also uh, the nickel 1 center reacts with methyl coenzyme at the sulfur and basically the difference for the mechanism 1 is that it promotes a corresponding C s bond cleavage. There we are talking about a metal carbon bond formation, but here you have the C s bond cleavage and it is now generating the methyl radical. So, occasionally is that homolytic cleavage for the corresponding C s bond is so important that whether you are able to produce the corresponding methyl radical which is also true if you go through the detail of the corresponding reaction of the methyl cobalamine. So, methyl cobalamine we do some reaction sometime we will find a cobalt is behaving as a catalyst and we are providing some good reagent as the methyl iodide. So, reaction any reaction in that form. So, cobalt is there in say in the bivalent cobalt the cobalt 2 you use some reducing agent like sodium borohydride and you use methyl iodide. So, definitely that path will go through a reduced form of the cobalt center which is basically activating your methyl function and that methyl function is responsible for transferring your methyl group to any other substrate. So, same thing is also happening that in this particular case you do not have that particular reagent which are supplying in form of methyl iodide, but you have to have the corresponding C s bond cleavage because this sort of C s bond cleavage is there and that is
so this particular the CS bond cleavage is important because sometimes we find that this particular one is not like that a nitrogen sulfur bond formation it is a carbon sulfur bond formation and this cleavage is also very important. So, sometimes we find that the metal is also required for this particular CS bond cleavage here. So, then once you form the methyl radical you are should be happy that it immediately if it attracts a hydrogen atom you will be able to form methane. So, the for this particular pathway is a little bit easier to convince that you are not involving nickel in plus 3 oxidation state. Why I am saying so that sometime if you stabilize a particular metal center in say nickel plus 2 and that particular center when it is reacting. So, you have nickel site and you have 4 nitrogens attached to it which is a macrocyclic ring and initially when it is forming that particular one that means nickel plus 2. And if we are talking something related to that, that we are going for some reactions where you are stabilizing a particular center as plus 1 nickel in the monovalent set which we are considering here it as the active state, the corresponding active oxidation state. So, this is the reduction, hmm. the reduction step what we are talking and at the same time we are talking oxidation that means the first mechanism we are talking also one step that means we are talking oxidation of nickel 2 to nickel 3 because we are talking something where you can consider these two step as a two electron transfer step like that of your catalytic cycle Wilkinson catalyst and so thing so many others con, uh, involving palladium. So, palladium is going from say palladium 0 to palladium 2 or sometime if you is going from a corresponding oxidation state like nickel in 1, 2, 3. So, this particular environment whether it is little bit molecular environment in terms of the ligand and some other interactions like the supramolecular environment in terms of the other non-covalent interactions or hydrogen bonding which is required for stabilizing nickel in plus 2 oxidation state. So, it is important to know that the, at that particular point you the reduction is also feasible and you can stabilize that means you are not changing very much your environment the coordination environment you can stabilize the corresponding environment around nickel 1 but it is sometimes very difficult to understand that it is also stabilizing the nickel in plus 3 oxidation state that means the same environment if you do not go for little bit manipulation over the environment is responsible for stabilizing all 3 oxidation state of nickel that means nickel in plus 1 nickel in plus 2 and nickel is plus 3. Instead of that if you go for considering the corresponding reaction that means mechanism where this particular mechanism we are not involving nickel in the plus 3 oxidation state. Instead we are converting it to a methyl radical. Huh? So, oxidation is taking place on the organic part and we are giving, getting something which is the methyl radical. So, these two alternatives also teach us something that you should be very much careful while taking all these things that which particular part can go for you whether you organic part is oxidizing or your metal center is oxidizing. So, when the radical is formed and the methane is forming from there and you get the same thyl radical that means the sulfur. So, electron transfer can take place involving your carbon center that means the formation of your methyl function either in the radical form in some other form then metal center and the sulfur center. So, the involvement of the sulfur group is also important for all these typical electron transfer reactions. So, you have the nickel 2 and the disulfide anion radical and this disulfide anion radical is reacting with nickel 2 species giving rise to nickel 1 and the heterodisulfide form. So, this particular mechanism 2 is therefore, plays a major role of nickel into facilitate a CS bond cleavage and definitely the CS bond cleavage is not that the very simple bond cleavage when you talk in terms of the organic chemistry we nicely say that we are making some CS bond bond formation and bond cleavage reaction, but we are ignoring sometime what redox process the identification of this redox process is so important that in the biological system that redox process is involving there and you are talking something where you can 
go for the corresponding CS bond cleavage. And to stabilize the product for the CS homolytic bond cleavage and the forming a coordination complex with the sulfur of COM. That means, you are getting ultimately you are stabilizing this particular center. That means, when we find this that means, if you can the product that means, where we are talking about the corresponding environment is the methyl sulphide. So, that if you can little bit recall for the different cytochromes where we are talking about the cytochromes and the iron center the coordination of this that means, the coordination of S methyl with that of S minus. So, when you have a neutral S methyl function you always expect that it can stabilize the nickel in plus 2 oxidation state and plus 1 oxidation state. But when you are able to produce a, a S minus species that means, you produce you get some charge on this because you have different affinity for nickel in plus 1 oxidation state, plus 2 oxidation state and plus 3 oxidation state for different forms of these groups. But you cannot change this particular environment whatever we are thinking about we are thinking about this particular part that means, what is going to coordinate from the apical side and what is forming there from that change. So, sulfur interaction so when you get that thing so you can have the choice for binding of this S methyl function and the coordination of the S minus. So, when it is in the deponented form it definitely can stabilize nickel in plus 3 oxidation state. So, this particular is not only the C S bond cleavage, but also the formation of the corresponding coordination compound around nickel and the corresponding binding of sulfur is also important because sulfur is provided by both COM and COB. So, next we will just go for the last species which we just Will today we will finish basically is your superoxide dismutase what we have seen earlier the simplest example we know, but it is not that the you should know only the simplest example which was based on copper and zinc and where the copper zinc superoxide dismutase we are talking about something that one particular part that zinc part was the structural part. It is giving you a definite structure for the copper environment and which is also a non redox part and copper is our redox part. So, this particular copper so when it is in the redox part so and the electron transfer from that superoxide anion. So, superoxide anion the electron transfer can take place for a corresponding redox based on copper 2 plus and copper 1 plus. So, this is little bit a complex one because if when you talk in terms of the both the copper presence of copper and zinc and uh, they all are there and this copper and zinc is present over there and this particular part is responsible for structure. So, you have a binuclear system. And for that binuclear system, one part is the redox part and another part is your non redox part, but definitely the part which is there that means, the zinc, zinc is responsible for giving you the corresponding reactivity pattern for this particular copper center. So, copper you have the corresponding electron transfer and that electron is basically going to your superoxide anion. Hmm. So, that superoxide anion how you can go for this particular copper. So, whatever we say there that means that you, you already you, we all know that how the superoxide is a dismutase reaction it will go for peroxide and O2. Hmm. So, this peroxide and O2 formation is therefore, is very important and what you should know that this is the binding behavior that means, this particular interaction that means, interaction of copper 2 with dioxygen or copper 1 with dioxygen that we have seen in case of our hemocyanin part. That hemocyanin part we all study due to the interaction of copper center with that of your dioxygen molecule because that time 
your dioxygen molecule was your carrier molecule, carrier molecule for copper. But this immediately establishes that your copper center can go and re interact with your O2 molecule. And if it is interacting and if there is some overlap, good overlap of this and you can go for corresponding electron transfer. So, what happens that you can get the extra electron from this copper one which is the reduced form, you can transfer this electron to O2 to make it O2 minus that means it is changing to superoxide that happens also your hemoglobin molecule. So, metal in the low oxidation state and you have the O2. So, one part of the system that means one part of this particular molecule you can get based on the copper. So, in other cases you can have superoxide dismutase based on manganese also. So, we all know starting from all these families that means the manganese bearing superoxide dismutase, then copper zinc by nuclear superoxide dismutase. In all these cases we find that it is available everywhere is a very good metal enzyme that catalyze the disproportionation of superoxide and peroxide and molecular oxygen through alternate oxidation reduction of their catalytic metal ions. So, at least you should have a site that means you should have a site where you have identified the corresponding catalytic metal ion. So, this catalytic metal site is very important otherwise you cannot get the corresponding reaction based on this simple superoxide dismutase reaction. That means, if you have a catalytic metal ion that means you have two corresponding form that means the metal can be stabilized in two oxidation states and its corresponding coordination geometry because it should support the corresponding coordination geometry for the metal ion in low oxidation state as well as the high oxidation state. So, these all we know as they are very useful enzymes for protecting cells from toxic products for aerobic metabolism. So, whenever we talk or whenever you discuss all these things related to your oxygen transport and oxygen storage, you should always think of something that when we talk about the dioxygen carrier molecules, we should always think of something that where your metal center is getting oxidized and you can supply some extra radical to the dioxygen molecule that dioxygen molecule can be reduced to superoxide or any other free radical species. So, we should have very useful mechanism for good free radical scavengers. So, free radical scavengers should also be there to form this superoxide making superoxide dismutase a master regulator for any kind of free radical balance and another species we call it as a ROS the reactive oxygen species in biological system wherever you go the cells can have the ROS. So, different ROSs are there. So, all these reactive oxygen species are there and how you can control how we can regulate the corresponding concentration of this reactive oxygen species and the typical concentration of the different free radicals that can be encountered by that nickel bearing enzyme. So, nickel that is why play an important role is playing so many other roles starting from your urease that it can also give rise to some redox reactivity. When it was present with urease you do not find any electron transfer behavior it is only a hydrolytic mechanism. So, any kind of such reaction that means that is your phosphatase type of activity also. If you have a phosphatase type of activity you can consider only a non redox hydrolytic path. So, nickel is so unique metal center that in biological system it is for forming both the two reactions that means in a non redox hydrolytic pathway, but also it can go for some other pathway which is based on electron transfer. So, this superoxide dismutase so already I told you that is a copper zinc superoxide dismutase and manganese is there and sometimes very few iron superoxide dismutases have also been identified. So, once you find these things that means you have copper that means the copper is a redox center, manganese is also a redox center and also your iron is also a redox center. Only thing is that it is differing from one form to the other that is your coordination environment is different that means the ligand parts are different. If your ligand part is different you get a bimetallic system, if your ligand part is suitable for binding manganese because the metal ion speciation which is also a very important factor that why 
you are getting a corresponding superoxide dismutase based on manganese only. You have large number of different metal ion pool. Why this superoxide dismutase what has been identified, what has been characterized at manganese SOD? It is not taking up nickel to its side. So, this ligand part that means the biological ligand part, the protein part has some good affinity and speciation for manganese. It will only attract manganese. So, this SOD, this manganese SOD in demetallated form that means without metal center, it will not bind copper, it will not bind zinc or it will not bind iron. So, it is very much specific to the metal center. So, large number of characterizations people have done through structural identification all the biochemical reactions and the theoretical uh, fitting of all these data and all these sometimes theoretical calculations also tell you that this particular part can go for the very basic reaction because this superoxide dismutase reactions and all other reactions are very basic reactions. So, this is not a very old story for that the nickel superoxide dismutase has been identified uh, mostly for the last 20 years. So, when people have identified this SOD that the active site comprises so immediately you can identify this particular site whether your nickel site is in plus 1 oxidation state, plus 2 oxidation state or plus 3 oxidation state and it is coordinated to 2 nitrogen atoms and 2 sulfur atoms from a peptide backbone in a square planar coordination environment. It is not a corresponding environment which is octahedral in nature because the nickel 2 once you have you always tempted to think that this nickel 2 can have other alternative coordination environment that means the octahedral coordination environment. And this nitrogen binding and sulfur binding if you can able to identify the typical nature for the individual atoms that what type of nitrogen it is and what type of sulfur atom from the protein backbone or the protein chain. Then in N 2 S 2 environment, N 2 S 2 environment in several other biological systems we have found in carbon monoxide dehydrogenase also. I told you that if you have a N2S2 environment, it can be very nicely fitted for your tetrahedral environment as well. But in this particular case, you have a square planar environment. Hmm. So, in the late 1990s, basically, that it has been identified and is a definitely is a nickel containing metal enzyme that catalyzes the corresponding uh, disproportionation of sorry, this O2 minus uh, by cyclizing between nickel 2 and nickel 3 oxidation states. So, you see when you compare this particular system with the other system that is not that the cycling of nickel 2 between nickel 2 and 3 or nickel 2 and 1 is also important so, identification of that part only. Your catalytic cycle is operating between nickel 2 and 1 or nickel 2 and 3 which is also important and that is being dictated by the environment. If you have a sulfur environment and these sulfur environments are thiolate environment that means S minus environment. So, if you have a S minus environment for that and this is the nickel SOD active site. So, if you have a corresponding uh, environment of this uh, thiolate sulfur what do you think that these are highly uh, responsible for is corresponding stabilizing your nickel in the plus 3 oxidation state. It can stabilize like your oxide, hydroxide, it can stabilize nickel in higher oxidation state. So, in this environment if it cycles between this 2 and 3, you can justify that your nickel environment is in the thiolate environment and it is in the square planar coordination geometry in the native form. And these are the typical ends which is providing the corresponding small polypeptide chain like of thing that means if you have this corresponding amino acid side chains and all this. So, this is the environment to this yellow groups are your sulfur ends and these two uh, light uh, blue color is your nitrogen ends and you have the green nickel center. So, when you have this square planar environment immediately it tells us something that always like your macrocyclic environment the square planar environment when we talk about nickel you always think of that is a square plan environment and which is well suited for your macrocyclic environment as well. So, you have that apical site available for interacting your substrate molecule or your superoxide O2 or peroxide molecule. So, your apical site is available 
for interacting with that and transferring electron to that particular species through the apical site. So, identification of this particular species and its corresponding cycle for these two oxidation state was very much important to identify nickel as an active site of nickel superoxide dismutase which is typically different from your copper zinc superoxide dismutase. So, you have something that means if you have the thiol coordination over there and if you have some other group because this particular thiol coordination to nickel also allows a bridging motif. It can also bridge some other metal center or the other nickel site, but that is also not happening over here. It is happy with a mononuclear system. So, you have to identify the center as a mononuclear one and that mononuclear nickel center is giving you that particular reaction to your superoxide. So, this is the thing that oxidation of that particular superoxide to plus 3. So, it recall also recalls you something that your palladium site or any other catalytic site. So, these are the corresponding cysteine residues and when you have, so you just providing your superoxide. So, this superoxide group is providing to you, so superoxide is one electron donor. So, this superoxide is giving you uh, this particular one is taking or uh, is this in this particular case it is one electron donor and in this particular case it is one electron acceptor. So, when it accepts electron it goes to peroxide and basic interest for us is that it is oxidizing your nickel center. It is going for trivalent nickel and that trivalent nickel is always preferring for coordination for a fifth coordination site or also a sixth coordination site. So, once you make this nickel in plus 3 oxidation state, you can go and you can identify, you can characterize this by means of your EPR spectra and that EPR spectra will immediately tell you that you have oxidized your nickel center to nickel trivalent state and that trivalent state is stabilized and this dangling part of this protein chain. So, this is this tridented ligand what we have shown in our previous slide that this tridented part you have and you have a dangling group involved there and this dangling group is providing your coordination for this nitrogen. So, wherever some other group is available, so nickel is in the trivalent state is therefore stabilized. So, when this group this nitrogen not this NH nitrogen this nitrogen, so tertiary nitrogen is coming and coordinating to your nickel center. Though you can have a very long nickel nitrogen bond in the apical site, but still you have some interaction. So, this particular so inbuilt ligand environment not that your solvent is coming over there, it is attaching to this particular center, but your inbuilt ligand what is available over there which is providing some donor group and is encapsulating your trivalent state nicely and is being stabilized. So, when this four coordinated center is available, you get this, you go for a fifth coordination for this particular nitrogen from this pendant group. So, this site is available for five coordination and this species when it is going because it is cycling back, so to and fro it is cycling. So, your another superoxide molecule will come into picture. So, this superoxide molecule will go and bind through this 6th coordination position. So, 6th site is available. So, this vacant site is available. Your this superoxide is available for attacking this nickel and it is transferring to O2 minus and it is providing that electron to the trivalent nickel and that trivalent nickel is going back to nickel 2. So, this is the thing that how this particular. So, the same species why you are seeing the disproportionate in reaction the same superoxide anion is responsible for electron donation as well as electron acceptance to the nickel center and that is very important because electrochemically if you measure the cyclic voltammogram, you should know the corresponding E 0 value for this transfer from nickel 2 to nickel 3. So, that potential is also useful to know that which particular potential region you can have the corresponding transfer of these two electrons from superoxide to hydrogen peroxide and <coughs> superoxide to dioxygen. So, this basically gives us something that you get all these informations for 
long distances for this apical binding and short distances for vessel binding. Okay.